Hi everyone, this is Brian with Obedia, and in today's video I'm going to give you an overview of some of the cool new features in Cakewalk's Sonar X2 digital audio workstation. Let's dive right in and start talking about these new improvements in Sonar X2. One of the first things I think a lot of people are going to notice is even more improvements to the Sonar graphical user interface. That's what Sonar X1 brought in was a number of new uh, looks and uh, improvements to the interface. The sonar interface of course is called the skylight interface and that's because the uh, purpose behind it is to give you more room uh, on your screen and uh, give you more light essentially. So one of the things that I think a lot of people are gonna notice is gonna be the screen set feature. I've got this menu right here and if I click on that I can select a number of different screen sets that I can make use of in my project. Each of these screen sets is going to give me uh, a different way of speeding up my workflow as I work in my production. So I can use all of these numbers up here in the top menu and I can also use the pull down menu and I can also use the numbers on my keyboard in order to switch back and forth between my screen sets. So this is really going to be a very cool way to be able to speed up your workflow as you work in Sonar. Other improvements to the graphical user interface include the browser being uh, much improved, allowing you to search very easily the media that you would like to make uh, use of in your project and uh, giving you a search box to be able to also search your plugins, your MIDI effects, your audio effects, and so on. So in this case, I want to find the RMix Sonar plugin. I'm just going to type mix. And there it is right there, and I can just drag this into my production so that new browser really going to speed things up for you as you work in Sonar. Another great new feature is improvements to the multi-dock, allowing you to dock a number of different objects into the multi-dock. I'm going to open up my Rapture virtual instrument right here, and I would like to, rather than having it float around on my screen, I would like to dock it into the multi-dock, and that's easy to do. I can just drag the window down, and when I see that blue highlighting, that means that I can dock something inside of the dock. Now Rapture is docked inside of my multi-dock, and I also, also have access to all of the other different uh, controls which I have docked into my multi-dock. If I want to undock something, I can simply grab that tab, drag it up and out. Now the other great thing about this new interface is that you also have the ability to really easily dock various controls inside of Sonar to different monitors. So if you work in a multi-monitor setup, such as I do, I work on three, I can now drag my mixing console over onto one screen and I can drag my matrix console onto another screen and this really allows me to dial in my workflow exactly as I would like it to be uh, inside of Sonar. So I think this is something a lot of folks are going to like because it's really going to allow you to be very, very selective about how it is that you want to interface with Sonar. Now also speaking of docking, you have the ability to dock the Pro Channel channel strip in a number of different locations inside of Sonar. You can see right now I'm dragging it around and I can choose where I would like to dock it. I can also dock it on the right hand side of my screen on the top right hand or have it take up more space on my screen. Just really depends on where it is that I would like it to be docked and this can also be a floating window or moved on to a separate monitor as well. Now speaking of floating windows, sometimes they get in your way and uh, you need to use your mouse a lot to click and close them and open them up and this specifically is troublesome with respect to software instruments. So Cakewalk has come up with a very cool way of getting around a lot of that and that's the new x-ray feature. So when I have my mouse over, uh, in this case, Rapture, I can simply hold the shift key on my keyboard and hit the x key. Now you see what that did is it made Rapture transparent, but this does not mean that Rapture is still going to block all of the controls that it was sitting on top of as I was working in my session. What this actually means is that now I have access to everything that is below Rapture. So now I've double clicked onto my MIDI event, which I have active inside of Sonar, and I can start making edits to that MIDI event. All of this while the Rapture interface is still open. Now when I want to show Rapture again, I can move my mouse again over Rapture, hold Shift and hit X. Now I can go back to making edits to Rapture. So this is a really cool way to make an edit to the software instrument, make it transparent, go back in, maybe add a little bit more MIDI, and then bring your instrument back. Really going to speed up workflow and keep you from having to click that mouse so many times. Now speaking of speeding up workflow, the smart tool uh, which has always been accessible here in the top left hand corner of Sonar. It's uh, denoted by that small star right there. The Smart Tool is definitely even smarter. It's going to give you access to a number of different uh, features as you are doing things such as working with MIDI Piano Roll. 
One of my favorites is the lasso ability, and this allows you to hold down the right mouse button on your keyboard, drag your mouse, and select a number of notes that you would like to edit. Now you can see I've grabbed all of these notes using the lasso tool, which was invoked using the right mouse key on my mouse. Now, because I have the smart tool invoked, I can make different changes to these notes. If I move my mouse cursor to the edge of one of these MIDI notes, I can resize all of the notes that I currently have selected. I could delete them if I wanted. If I move my smart tool to the middle of one of these notes, I can drag and move all of them around. And I can do a number of other different edits, such as being able to uh, delete them all, draw new notes, various things like that. All of this is done using one tool, which is really cool. So again, less clicking to be had. Now you can, as always, if you want, bring up the heads up display for your tools by simply clicking on the T button on your keyboard. This is cool because it's going to bring up that heads up display, allow you to quickly change tools if maybe you don't always use the smart tool and then get right back to work. Again, speaking about speeding up workflow, we now have automation and take lanes on our tracks in Sonar. This is super useful uh, because let's say that you end up doing a lot of loop recording in your sessions and you maybe do loop overdubs and things like that. You can now engage the take lanes button, which is right here on the bottom left hand corner of my track. Engage that and now you're going to have the new take lanes available to you in Sonar. As you record new looped parts, you're going to add new takes to your track. And then you can comp those different pieces together into one final track, and that'll allow you to really build the perfect drum track, the perfect keys track, vocals, whatever that may be. All of this can be done using take lanes. Now we also have access to automation lanes, again accessible right down here next to the take lanes button. Automation lanes, pretty self-explanatory if you're familiar with automation, but automation of course is the easy way to be able to uh, invoke a number of different controls which usually you would have to sit and use your mouse for and do everything manually. Instead you can draw an automation and let the audio workstation do the work for you. So you can select right here from a number of different controls uh, which are specific to the track, such as panning, automated mute, volume, so on and so forth. But you can also control features of the plugins which are instantiated on your track. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and edit my volume envelope a little bit. And now, because again, I'm using the smart tool as I move my mouse around, it's context sensitive, and it's going to change depending on where, where I move my mouse. If I move it over this green line for automation, I can draw in new nodes, and then I can move those nodes around. I can also draw my automation in using my pencil tool, and I can delete automation nodes by simply clicking on them. So the cool thing about this is that this is really going to allow you to easily do your automation edits and especially for someone who uses automation a lot in your productions, automation lanes and quick access to them and being able to use a smart tool going to make all of those edits a lot faster and easier. Now the Pro Channel Channel Strip still has many of the features that we had come to love in Sonar uh, X1 originally, such as the compressor and the built-in equalizer, but there's also a brand new uh, feature called the Console Emulator. This is going to emulate analog gear, analog mixing gear, and allow you to invoke a different sound, warmth, etc. onto your audio. You have three types of consoles to choose from, the S-type, the N-type, and the A-type. Each of these has a bit of a different interface, as you can see, and each one, of course, is going to apply a different audio algorithm to the audio which you have recorded or that you are mixing. So I've got some drums right here. I'll just go ahead and play them back a little bit and let you guys hear a little bit of what the console emulator is going to do. So if you're a little bit picky about the sound that you get out of your channel strip, again, Cakewalk is making a lot of moves to make you happy, uh, giving you the console emulator inside of your Pro Channel channel strip. Another cool new feature in Sonar X2 is the Matrix View. This is invoked by clicking on Views and selecting Matrix Views, or you can hold down the Alt key and hit the 5 key on your keyboard. This is going to allow you to bring in various loops and other pieces of audio or rex files uh, into the matrix and allow you to plan out how it is that you would like to sequence a song so you can experiment with different song patterns and layouts and various bits like that and be able to really uh, figure out exactly again how it is that you would like to organize a song. You can use a clip in the matrix by simply clicking on it.
And as you do this, you can drag in your new loops, and again, you can really plan out how it is that you would like to build a song. So if you're into electronic music production like I am, this is really going to help a lot of you guys out who are used to loop-based music production and making use of groove machines and various things like that. This is also geared very much towards live performance, being able to use the matrix in a live performance, triggering different loop samples and things like that. Uh, really going to allow you to take Sonar X2 onto the stage with you and start to really change how it is that you make use of hardware with your software. Now there are a number of different new plugins in Sonar and so you'll want to check out some of our other videos for more information on those and how to make use of them. But one of my new favorites is the Armix Sonar. I'm going to drag that into the FX bin on my drums that I've been working with here. And what the Armix Sonar is going to allow you to do is find troublesome frequencies and either boost them or do away with them entirely, but do so in a very visual format. So I'm going to play my drums here and I'll show you just how the Armix Sonar interacts with my audio. So you can see that what I'm able to do here is kind of mix using my eyes, but this also allows me to really find specific frequencies and either boost them or do away with them entirely. I can do this by changing the shape of the filter which I am making use of as I take a look at that sort of heat zone map of my audio as it plays back through the Armix sonar. Then I can make use of the inside level and the outside level sliders in order to really dial in exactly what it is that I would like to be controlling while I'm making use of the Armix sonar. So this is a pretty cool way to be able to mix and again you see how easily I was able to make use of the x-ray feature as well really enjoy the x-ray feature allowing me to dive right in make use of all of the different controls here um, inside of sonar be able to play back my audio and then bring back the interface of my plugin again really quickly all very cool ways to be able to speed up your workflow inside of sonar so that right there guys is just a quick overview of some of the many cool new features in cakewalks sonar x2 digital audio workstation it's available now and some of these features are going to be available in different versions of Sonar, so you're going to want to look at what comes with your version of Sonar when you do go out to purchase it so that you know exactly what it is that you are getting. But uh, I think that for those of you guys who like Sonar, this is going to be a great new upgrade for you. For those of you who are thinking about diving into Sonar, this is a great time to be able to do it. Check out Cakewalk's website at cakewalk.com, of course. And if I can answer any questions for you, give me a holler at brian at obedia.com. Find us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash obedia tutor. And of course, on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash obedia tutor. Give us a call. Work one on one with an audio professional such as myself. Find out how we can help you to tame your technology and get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. That's what we do best here at Obedia. Thank you guys as always for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Hey, 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 hey.